Hare Krishna. So today is our Sunday Bhagavad Gita class. We are actually discussing one bhajan today. So we are be discussing Bhagavad Gita. Actually, this bhajan, we'll read it now and we'll see, <coughs> is actually based on teachings of Bhagavad Gita. If we read the translation. Okay, this is called Bhaja Bhude Mana by Govinda Das. Kavinaj. He is coming in Acharya, he is an Acharya in the Parampara of Gauriya, Vaishnava Sampradaya. Sampradaya. So, he says in this song, he is lamenting. <coughs> I read the whole song. So, as I said, we are discussing because Bhagavad Gita's teachings are encapsulated in this world, in this song. Okay, there are four texts, so I will read it. O oh mind, just worship the lotus feet of the son of Nanda, which make one fearless, having obtained this rare human birth, cross over this ocean of worldly existence through the association of saintly persons. Both in the day and at night, I remain sleepless, suffering the pains of the heat and cold, the wind and the rain. For a fraction of flickering happiness, I have uselessly served wicked and miserly men. What assurance of real happiness is there in all of one's wealth, youthfulness, sons, and family members? This life is torturing like a drop of water on a lotus petal. Therefore, you should always serve and worship the divine feet of Lord Hari. It, text 4, last text. It is the desire and great longing of Govinda Das to engage himself in the nine processes of bhakti, namely, hearing the glories of Lord Hari, and chanting those glories, constantly remembering him and offering prayers to him, serving the Lord's lotus feet and serving the Supreme Lord as a servant, <coughs> worshipping him with flowers and incense and so forth, serving him as a friend and completely offering the Lord one's very self. So now, starting text one. First of all, about this song, this song is in Bengali, because our acharyas mostly came in that area. And these are uh, material considerations. Knowledge is universal. So, we know who wrote this song, Govinda Das. Because in Gaudiya songs, at the end, the author writes his name, asking for blessings, for mercy. So, <coughs> the teachings are universal. Actually, the teachings are very they are coming in, not in Sanskrit, in Bengali, but it's Vedic teachings. So let's look at the lines one by one. This song begins with Bhajahu Re Mana Shri Nanda Nanda. <coughs> Translation, Oh mind, oh my mind. This person, Govinda Raj, is speaking to his mind. <coughs> because the mind, we may say it's my mind, but actually few people are in control of their mind. It's like a separate entity. Sometimes we have to fight with our mind. That today is Sunday, I have to go here. No, I want to go there. No, I should go there. No, mind is saying I should go there. Senses are pulling, and we have to agree. So, Govinda Das is uh, from the song we can see, he's a devotee. So, he's praying with his mind. The mind, now you listen to me. It's not listening. Oh, mind, just worship the lotus feet of the son of Nanda. Who's the son of Nanda? Nanda, Nanda. Krishna. Krishna, when he appeared, his father was Nanda, Nanda Maharaj. So Nanda, Nanda, Nanda means also son, child. So Nanda, Nanda means son of Nanda. Baja Hure Mana, Sri Nanda Nandana. Abhaya Charana So he's saying, Oh, mind, just worship the son of Nanda. Now, interesting point, why doesn't he say worship Krishna? Worship Hari. If we say Krishna, or if we say God, Many people have different ideas. For example, some say that Krishna is a normal man, or he is some great personality, or that God is an impersonal entity. Everyone has different ideas about God. But Govinda Raj is very clear. He said, worship Krishna, who appeared as the son of Nanda. He's a person. God is a person. He's not an energy. Light is coming out of there. God is a light. God is energy. I'm God. You're God. We are God. Everything is God. People have different opinions. But he's very clear. He says, oh my mind, 
worship the son of Nanda. So here we understand he's a personality. He's a personality. We understand from Bhagavad Gita, from the Vedas, that the Supreme is a person. Person not like me. I'm a person, I've got hair growing here. I get sometimes I get a fever, and sometimes I sleep, go to the toilet. Not like that person. He's he's Purush. I'm Purush, but he's Purushottam. Purushottam. Supreme personality. He from Bhagavad Gita we understand chapter 4, text 6, he has a spiritual body. And when he takes birth, it's not his karma. I took birth because of my karma in a certain country, place, culture, with a certain kind of ability or disability. But he took birth just because he wanted. That's his desire to take birth. Sambhavami Atma Maya. He says in Bhagavad Gita, I come out of, in my own energy, my own, not that I'm under Maya or some other energy that I'm forced to take birth because of karma and forced to die. Krishna comes on his own, leaves on his own. And some, let's say there's intelligent people who think, see Krishna came in this planet, so he's a normal man. This is a normal man because but that's like saying, okay, the Prime Minister Modi went to investigate what is happening in him hands. Oh, he's also gone mad. No, he's just walking inside. Or he enters the prison and he'll think, oh, he also got arrested. No, he's investigating, looking, you know. Someone may not understand it. So, Supreme Lord comes, Manusham Rupam Apanam. He'll come and take a, so a human form, supposedly human form. And then everyone will think, oh, he became a man. God is a man. Krishna is a man. No, he says very clearly in his own text, and Acharya say carefully that he's not a normal man. Guda Kapata Manusha Pitavankila Karmani Saharamena Keshava. The Supreme descended into this material world, Kritavankila Karmani, performed different pastimes. Saharamena with Ram means Balaram, his brother. There's a picture, Krishna and Balara. Krishna and his brother. Saharavena Keshava, Buddha Kapata Manusha. He hid himself as if a human. So many verses in Gita, you can understand that Supreme is a person, Krishna, for example. He says, Bhava Bhakta, become my devotee. It says in two places in Gita. Bhava means become Man Bhakta, Man Mai. Now, if someone is talking, saying me, me, he's a person, me. If, if you say Supreme God is a light, light cannot say me, <laughs> cannot say anything. Light cannot say anything. So Krishna says in Gita, Bhavanat Bhakta, Manmana, Bhavanat Bhakta, Madhyaji, Maam Namaskuru. Think of me, Manmana, Bhavanat Bhakta. Think of me, become my devotee, Maam Namaskuru. Unto me, offer your obeisance, offer Dandavat, offer Pranam. In another place, conclusion of Gita, Maam Ekam Sharanam Braja. To me, you should surrender. Maam Ekam, only to me. Not me and this and this and that. But Krishna is saying, we are speaking teachings of Bhagavad Gita. So Gita says, Gita means Krishna is saying, surrender to me. Maam Ekam Sharanam Braja. Again, Maam. And another place he says, Aham Adevi Devana. I am the source of all the Devas. So many personalities in this creation providing heat, light, water, Indra, Chandra, Surya, they are all under some superior power. They are not independent. Sometimes they think they are independent. Then Krishna puts them in light, like we heard Brahma Vimohanandila, Indra also. Something goes wrong, Krishna has to remind them for their benefit. Otherwise, when we forget Krishna, we fall in Maya. So to again remind them to come under his energy and to serve him. Mercifully, he comes to remind them. So he said, Krishna says, Aham Adi Deva Nam. All these different devas who are administering this universe, they come from me. I am their source. Aham Adi, Adi means beginning. I am the beginning or source. Aham Adi Deva Nam, all the living entity, the demigods. I am their source. In other place he says, Yo maam evam asamurdha, asamurdha, janati purushottamaha sasarvavit. One who knows me as the Supreme, without doubting, asamurdha, yo maam evam asamurdha, janati 
पुरुषोत्तम सर्वविद वचनम सर्वभावेना भारत ये से जो सनु भारत अर्जुन वन हु अंडरस्टैंड्स मी एज पुरुषोत्तम द सुप्रीम पर्सनालिटी सर सर्वविद एक्चुअली ही नोज एवरीथिंग एंड इट्स नॉट इजी टू कम टू नो कृष्ण टू नो हिम इन ट्रुथ विदाउट डाउट because we may be doubting till as a devotee actually we will not fully surrender otherwise we will be free from all lamentation it's a gradual process we begin bhakti then a little more we try to get knowledge try to deepen our faith try to apply ourselves gradually we surrender more and more and the whole point shastra is to make us surrender the process of bhakti purifies more knowledge is it's a gradual process so krishna is saying that without doubt one who reaches that stage of understanding i am supreme yo mam evam asamudha janati purushottama sarvabhit such a person is knower of everything because when knowledge of god is revealed everything is revealed material spiritual everything is revealed when knowledge of god reveals to us and therefore in the gurukul system they were taught about god about his avatar his energy his creation everything and then gradually everything is revealed that's what uh, shri prabhu the founder of iskon said that we should establish the gurukul system again it's established after many years and centuries in india and he said we should principally teach about the science of god of course some other things because when we teach about god when people are taught about and they understand how krishna is manifest everywhere he uh, andan tras parman parman chyan trastham he is in the universe he is in the atom parmanu chyan trastham he is in the atom he is in the universe he is he is in gita he says he is making the planets rotate so when we understand that then we understand everything what is left to know once we know god because his energy on is pervading everything it is creation So, so Krishna says that one who understands me in truth, yoma asamudha without doubt, he knows everything. Again, now the point here, yoma, ma, ma means subject to me. So all these different verses in Gita tell us that Krishna is a person and he's referring to me, surrender to me, come to me. And right in the beginning, Arjun doubts because Krishna says to Arjun that. Uh, I taught. He is going to speak Bhagavad Gita now to Arjun. So he says, "Before you, I spoke this to the Sun God. Imam Vivastate Yoga broke the Maraham of the Yam. I spoke this imperishable science of God to the Sun God, Vivaswan. Then Vivaswan Manu Vibhava Manu Riksha Kave Bhavi. Vivaswan spoke it to Manu. Manu is the father of mankind, and then Manu Manu." Manu Vibhava, Manu Ikshvaku. Then Manu spoke to Ikshvaku. Ikshvaku, that time, was ruling the whole planet Earth. He was the emperor of the whole planet. So the, he should be taught the science so he can propagate kingdom. So Krishna says, <coughs> I, so "I told this to the sun god, and then gradually became lost." So Arjun told Krishna, "You spoke to sun god. Sun god, that was you know, he. Man, he came long time ago." the sun god has a different life span so arjun said how is it possible you are born with me now you took birth i took birth we are friends katam aham vigyan vigyaniyam tam adav proksa vaniti how do i know that you spoke that knowledge then krishna says that i took many births and you took but you forgot and i remember he is telling the difference between both of them because krishna is supreme he is not a normal man he remembers everything we forget it. Past and some are doubting. I don't ask. <laughs> First life, only one life. No, Gita says that. Okay, so in these hints I give in Gita that Krishna has a spiritual body, spiritual form, and he's a personality. They find this song. Govinda Ra, Govinda Das says that worship Nanda Nanda Ram, Krishna, who came as son of Nanda. Worship him. He came as son of Nanda, but he is Ajay. We should forget. Gita says, "Ajosa na piyavi yatma." Krishna says, "I am not born; I am eternal." Then why we celebrate Janmashtami? 
Janma Shri Krishna apparently appeared. It was a transcendental process. He appeared. It was like the Leela. But you know, have to read how he appeared. He didn't come from the womb. It's written very clearly in Bhagavatam. He entered the mind of Vasudev, his father. Then he came to the mind of Devaki. Then he appeared with four hands as a baby, with gold and jewels, beautiful hair and dhoti. Have you heard anyone born like that? No? Jewels, dhoti, beautiful hair. No. Not a normal book. It's a leader. So Krishna is Raja. So now here he's saying, Govinda does, worship son of Nanda. Then he's saying, two things will come out of this. Worship the son of Nanda, which make one fearless. One, two, that having obtained this rare human birth and engaged in worshiping son of Nanda, cross over the ocean of worldly existence. Bhava Sindhu, very, not easy to explain into English. Bhava Sindhu, ocean of material suffering, ocean of birth and death, ocean of worldly existence. Basically, we are in mind. We are in a material consciousness whereby I am thinking I am this body, I am from this country, I am a man, I am a woman. Because actually we are souls. Bhagavad Gita says we are souls. That we are a soul trapped in this body. Body is temporary. This body is like a shirt. At night I change the shirt. I keep changing different cloth. So simply body will keep the soul, we, will keep changing different bodies. We'll keep changing. We are not the body. So we have to understand that. So what will happen if you worship Son of Nanda? We we'll realize I'm not the body. We realize, we come to that realization. That is one. Second, fearlessness comes. Fearlessness is born. So he says, just worship Son of Nanda, which make one, just worship the lotus feet of the Son of Nanda, which make one fearless. Abhay Charanaravinda. Charan is feet. So, a name of uh, Vishnu or Krishna is Abhay Charanaravinda, which means fearless, one who has lotus feet, which if we take shelter of, we become fearless. So that's the meaning. So, how is that? People who are in ignorance, they are having lamentation, anxiety and fear. It's people who are more in ignorance and not having knowledge, they are more in this state. And lower life forms, animal life forms, they are much more in fear and lamentation because they don't have knowledge, they cannot understand what is happening in this world. Okay, simple example, Diwali. We see so many stray dogs, where do they go? They get afraid, they run away. We will not see them. They will be hiding with some. They can't understand what's happening. Bombs. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, that this universe, destruction is happening. They can't understand. And even primitive life form, primitive human, some are living in the jungle. And then some thunder comes, oh, the sky is falling. Really, they think like that and they'll run away somewhere. <laughs> so, due to ignorance, Fear is manifest. More ignorance, more fear. Children, children are always in fear. They can't understand what's happening. So, uh, so many examples are there. Children, uh, same example I've always given. Yeah, like uh, when, when the father is leaving home, children are crying. And he will not come back. <laughs> they can't understand. He's coming back. He's going to work. He'll come back. Out of ignorance. So, out of ignorance, suffering comes. And so we who are in material existence, we suffer. We really suffer. We cannot understand. What happens after death? What is old age? Why is old age attacking me? What will happen next second to me? I don't understand. This material world, anything will happen. Anytime. So out of ignorance, suffering is there. So much suffering. We don't understand even our identity. If I ask any one of you, who are you? Why? What will you answer if I ask why? What will you answer? Okay, what will you answer? The name. You give your name. Someone will give a name. But the name doesn't come immediately. 
we are born after one or two weeks, we showed astrology and this Maya Nakshatra. Okay, okay. In the beginning, we pop. What does it even pop out? Okay, Meanwhile, you are lying, I'm waiting for my name. So, name doesn't come immediately. That time, then who are you? We don't get our name. Normally, we get, we'll give our name, we'll give our state or family or something, or caste, nationality. This all pertains to the body. We are in ignorance. We don't know who we are. PhD professor asks him, who are you? I'm PhD. Like, where was that? I'm a doctor. And then before that, what, where is you? Why did we take birth? Before we took birth, where were we? Ignorance, no knowledge. And the problem with this modern education, I get my PhD, I think I know everything, you know, but I don't even know who I am. Then what's the point? What's the point? Of course, we need some knowledge to work. But we cannot say we know we knowledge. Actually, now in the material world, this material civilization is in everyone is in ignorance more than before. In Vedic culture, there was some knowledge. Now we don't know our identity. We don't know our duty. What shall I do? What shall I do? Now we are growing up, Father, you become an engineer, you become a doctor, you become a fighter pilot. Okay? He's given Father only to be, do this degree, I'm doing the degree. Or I want to do this, I want to do that. But what should I do? We are born in this world to do what? No one is asking. What is our duty? Why did we come here? That we have to ask. Complete ignorance. We don't know what we have to do. We don't know our duty. We don't know our identity. And as we know, one day we'll all die. Sorry to remind you. So what happens then? No knowledge. No knowledge at all. Ignorance. So, due to all this ignorance, we may not know even that we are ignorant. You may think I had a degree. I did a degree here. And then I did B.T.E.C. and this and that. Okay, but still, because of this subtle, we understand that I don't know what's going on here. There's so much fear. When will I get sick? You know, I'm avoiding getting sick. And when I get old, what will happen? So much fear, this material world is characterized by fear. And many people make money on that. Some are called insurance brokers. Yeah, insurance, when you travel and help, they'll make money from that, they'll fear. And uh, lock people, making locks. And so many kind of people make money from that because they understand people are in fear. How to come out of fear? Not on the material platform, not on this platform that we are now. That won't, won't take us out of fear. Because the problem is the material life. The problem is the material existence. What is material existence? Material existence is life without worshipping God, without understanding God, without understanding our relation to God. That is a material life. Spiritual life is living life according to God's instructions. That is given in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita. So according to God's instructions, if we live, that is called a spiritual life. So how to come out of matter and material suffering? We have to come to knowledge. Knowledge doesn't mean go to college again. That's not knowledge. That is shilpa. That is knowledge of how to turn a boat, fix a machine, put on a computer, or change a hard disk, code something. Knowledge means understanding who I am, who is God, what is my duty and purpose in this life? So that knowledge is in Bhagavad Gita, it's in the Shastra. But some of this knowledge, it will not come through reading. It will come in the heart through divine manifestation. Within the heart is Paramatma. Krishna says that uh, I am in everyone's heart. Sarvasyacha aham, the sunni vishpok. I am present in everyone's heart. From me comes intelligence, knowledge, forgetfulness. Sometimes we have to solve some problem. So, it could be some academic problem or some practical world problem. So, I put the problem in my head, I try to contemplate it. Who's giving the answer? If you say, I'm giving it, okay, then give it. No, I have to think. Why are you thinking? Give the answer. Actually, we are querying some other source. That is Paramatma. Krishna says in Gita that intelligence is coming from me. But we call intelligence 
That is Krishna giving knowledge from inside. He may give, he may not give. Depends on our karma. So so many things. Some have more knowledge, some less. But now we're talking about material knowledge. Now we want to get spiritual knowledge. I want to understand who I am, what is my duty, why I took birth, what is my real eternal identity as a soul. Not in this life. In this life, maybe I took birth in a kind of body, in this state, caste, this gender. But what is my eternal identity? Because next life it will change and change again, again, again. Different country, different family, different re religion, different culture. But something is not changing, me, myself. That identity as a soul. So what is that? I want to know. That will come by divine inspiration. The Paramatma will reveal. But how? When we begin to worship Krishna, because out of bhakti, is born knowledge. That knowledge will come through bhakti, devotional service. Therefore, Krishna tells Arjuna that I am giving you this knowledge, but finally, you also have to approach a guru. Pariprashnena. Paripadena. Pariprashnena. See, you have to approach him, serve him, and ask questions. So now what happens is the system is even to get knowledge from Krishna and to understand about God, Krishna says you have to approach a guru. That guru is my representative. He will communicate and speak, and then we understand that Krishna is speaking to the guru. Then he will give you how we will come out of our predicament, our problems. Arjuna was in a big problem. Then he surrendered to Krishna, and Krishna very simply picked him out of that problem. Okay, that's okay, no problem. For, for us, we will not see the solution. We don't have that consciousness. Our knowledge is covered, but Krishna will have Krishna will reveal it. But for that, we have to follow. Is it that we have to uh, practice bhakti under the shelter of a pure devotee guru, and then knowledge will come. <coughs> that is repeated many times in the shastra. What is that? Yasyaasti bhakti na yathadeve tatha guru. Yasya Deve Paramahate Yatha Deve Tatha Guru Tasya Ki Kritartha Prakarshante Mahatma One who has implicit faith in both the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the Guru, to him the import of Vedic knowledge Prakarshante Mahatma is revealed in the heart. So this ignorance that in that we feel, which is leading to fear in material life, can only be solved by us becoming self-realized, realizing our true identity and God realized. <coughs> so that is the way. And this is what Krishna is speaking in Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna. That whole system is speaking how to do that. It's not, uh, it's not, it's a science. It's not a blind faith or belief. What do you believe? Do you believe in it? Do you believe in reincarnation? It's a science. Bills are presented very clearly as Atma Vidya. That is a spiritual science to be learned. It doesn't depend on our belief or not. I don't believe fire will burn me. It's not in our religion to believe. So it won't burn. <laughs> to burn. Reincarnation is a fact. But I'm a Hindu. I am not a Hindu. We don't believe that. Whether we believe or not, soul takes birth again. And the proof is given in Gita. In that, in this one life, we take so many bodies. We take a one-year-old body, ten-year-old body, twenty-year-old body. The bodies keep changing, but something inside is not changing. I still know that I am still Murari, I didn't change. I am still Murari, but the body is changing. Some things I want to do that twenty years ago I did, I can't do it. So I understand that. I'm not changing, but the body is changing. Same body dies, so already I, I was not affected by the body, although the body changed, I'm the same person. So when the body dies, how will that affect my existence? I take another body. This is a logic explained in Bhagavad Gita, that reincarnation is there, it's a fact, right in the beginning, chapter two. So if one wants to come to fearlessness, as here Govinda Das Kavraj is saying, that Abhai uh, Charanara, that you just approach Krishna, who is, fee, who is known as Abhishekar, whose uh, shelter gives fearlessness. 
because he's saying that, that for us to become on that platform of fearlessness, we have to approach Krishna and surrender. There's no other way. We understand from Gita that but what happens when we surrender to Krishna? Aham tam sarva Krishna says, I destroy all your sinful reactions. Our suffering is because of our sin of the past. Gita says that in chapter 13. Our suffering is due to what we did in the past. You know, later in Mahabharata also, Vitarashta asked Krishna, that why I am suffering? He replied, this is due to the past life. Uh, he shot an arrow, killed 100 birds. Father's eyes were burnt. So he was born blind. He had 100 sons, but they were killed. So that is mentioned, Mahabharata. All of us also, suffering is due to our actions. Now, we don't know what we did in the past and what we will suffer. We don't know next second what will happen. We do not understand what will happen next minute. Will we see December? I hope you do. I am not, you know. I am just telling you, we know so many cases. We don't know. What so, uh, for, for us to come on that level, we have to come on the platform of fearlessness. And uh, fearlessness comes, Krishna says, when you surrender to me, I destroy all your sinful reactions. Aham tam sarva papya pyo moksha shami. I liberate you. Maash vachapa. Don't be afraid to surrender. Krishna is saying, don't be afraid. You think I'll surrender. What about that? What about that? What about that? What about that? What will he think? What will they think? He said, don't be afraid. If you surrender to me, or, surrender means you become a devotee and follow Bhagavad Gita, live your life according to Like Arjun. Okay, he was told not to fight. Then he said, okay, I'll follow you. Karishri Bachanam, I'll follow you. Follow means he did his same duty, but now for Krishna, under Krishna's guidance. So this is uh, text one. Okay, so much can be said. Going into text two. Text two, here it says, Govinda Das is saying, both in the day and night, I remain sleepless, suffering the pains of the heat and the cold, the wind and the rain. For a fraction of flickering happiness, I have uselessly served wicked and miserly men. So he's saying here that both in day and night, I remain sleepless. Why? Suffering from pains of heat, cold, wind, rain. So he's just explaining the nature of this material world, which I don't have to tell you, all of you. Bhagavad Gita says, Anityam Asukham Rokam. This material world is Anityam. It will not last. Nothing will last forever. Of course, the material world won't last forever. But your situation now will change. Tomorrow, day after, after one year. We cannot be stable and say, okay, now I'm happy. I got a good job, a good whatever. situation. House, friend, then tomorrow something recession came. Job is not okay. Or job is okay, but now family something happened. So family is okay, job is okay. Suddenly, oh my pancreas, something diagnosed. I have to go to the doctor. Anithyam, our situation is temporary. Anytime it will move, like in the ocean. In the ocean, you cannot keep the boat straight. One way will hit you there. Finally, they have to drop that anchor. Then, with a, it's very heavy, it will keep the boat there. So he's saying, Govinda Das is saying, I am suffering from heat and night, day and cold, um, heat and cold, day and night, rain, so many things are making me suffer. So that's the nature of material world. Uh, material life is simply, try to stop the suffering. <laughs> that's all. At least I'll get a degree, I'll get some money, I'll work, then I'll stop the suffering <coughs> of hunger. Or stop the suffering of rain because I need a house. Material life is that, or I need to solve the medical issue. Simply material life is adjust, adjust again, keep adjusting, then material life adjusted. Okay, I can adjust. Okay, now uh, there's a heat wave. All right, put on the AC, buy it, a fan. So, world is changing, I am changing, we are adjusting constantly. This is life. <coughs> material, not spiritual. So, uh, material world is not created for happiness and comfort. It was not built, all of this, to 
be happy, to create happiness. Actually, opposite. Bhagavad Gita says in two places, this material world is made to make you suffer. Surprise. <laughs> no to Okay. You're all of you. Some of you are new. So, actually, the purpose of this material world is to suffer. So, pretty much everyone is suffering. And there's a human being, even devatas are suffering sometimes. Asuras take over the kingdom, then they go to Brahma, then Brahma tells Vishnu. Then they have to come and he think, come and try to get back the kingdom. Everyone, everyone is suffering. Even if you have money, you have wealth, but you, you have to get home, you have to get a disease. You have, suffering is it's nothing, I don't have to tell you, you know that. Cold, hot, loud, sometimes things, loud sound coming from somewhere. Or famine, flood, or other people are making us suffer. So like that. So, it's according to Vedic culture, traditional culture that was in India, the plan of life was not to try to become so comfortable in this world. The plan of life was, let me solve this problem of my repeated birth and death and come out. Yes, people will be in a family, will have a job and all that, but their aim is not to accumulate wealth and get a very big house. You know, after so many years, so many temples are here, which are thousands of years old, isn't it? Jagannath Puri, Sri Rangam, North, South, so many temples, great temples. Yeah, in Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Kerala. Where, what about the houses? Where are the houses? No houses. <laughs> in, Euro, in Europe, in maybe China, I don't know. They have huge castles, but not in India. The, we, we live in a you know, simple dwelling, of, except the king. He has to have a strong, because he, they'll attack him. He has to have a fortification. But people did not build big houses. They built big temples. The Vedic culture was not to become so happy and comfortable in this material world, because they understood you cannot, you cannot. That is not, uh, you cannot go up the river, the river is flowing like that. The plan of the world is that. So what to do? So the point is, let us stop our existence in this material world and not come back in the cycle of birth and death. That was where people focused. That was the focus. Therefore, anityama sukham lokam, Krishna is telling Arjuna, it's not happy place, it's temporary. Anityama sukham lokam, imam prapya, vajasam. Having come here, just worship me, don't bother about me. <coughs> so the design of this world is to suffer. Now someone may say, no, but I'm happy, he's happy, they are happy. Happiness, actually that is not happiness. Happiness of eating good food, going in a Mercedes car, that is not actually happiness, because that happiness is for the body, but Shastra says we are not the body. There is some kind of happiness. Just like in a dream. In a dream, I may be so happy, everything, but then I wake up, oh, that was not real, that was just an illusion, and really that was not happiness. So that is not the actual happiness uh, that people think they feel in this material world. Actual happiness we do not experience, that is on the spiritual level. On the spiritual level, one can anandam bodhivardhanam, ocean of happiness can manifest on the spiritual world. On the material platform, not really, because material platform means I'm using my body, but I'm not the body. Whatever I do to my five senses to be happy, it will not cross a certain point. That's not possible. Even, for example, if we just analyze what is it making us happy, we'll see that, okay, this, this food is making me happy. Okay, today it's making me happy, tomorrow it's not. Oh, now I got food poisoning, now I can't eat that food. Oh, become happy, eat it. No, I can't. So whatever makes us happy, we will analyze in our life that it's not really that, you know, what is people get happiness from. Alcohol, good food, <coughs> from sex, money, and all of these things are temporary. Which brings us to the next point here. He says, for a fraction of flickering happiness, I have uselessly served wicked and miserly men. Chappal Sukha. Sukha means happiness. Chappala. Chappala means. Chappala. 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 Chappala
very very insignificant or yes. temporary temporary short okay so chapala sukha from previous acharyas who wrote who told us about this song they are referring to sex sex is the greatest material happiness okay of course gurunda das himself was married that is not issue but the issue is people seeking happiness in that okay so the issue is here he says that actually this material world this is called chapana sukha flickering happiness a few seconds but people end up so hard for a few seconds of happiness fraction of happiness it's a very short so people will endeavor for money possessions posi- position honor wealth actually one of the reasons is simply to for attracting women or attracting men whatever we want to say so because of that they undergo great suffering work hard it says here be fall as they will kripana durajana i have said wicked and wise and men that happens when you have to work for someone some are very cruel they don't care about us we could wisely they'll not part of their wealth so we struggle to serve them we struggle hard to accumulate wealth and possessions so many possessions and but we don't need it look someone need to uh, how a uh, basic uh, accommodation some basic job some money enough to support the family and house and all that so what is the point of hard accumulating so much money so much wealth that is simply ostentatious to show just to show and to well uh, it's based on sex desire acharyas are telling us about this song what he's referring to that people are trying to attract women simply by having all these well done things when actually people can survive with very little even if you look at any family even now in the village how they survive happily not that they would be pressure we don't have so then for that well we have to start serving these wealthy people who are very cruel so this is he's referring to here be fale there is no be fale seven fala be fale i didn't get i won't get any benefit but i have to serve these people who you know they they so cruel and i'm suffering because of their cruelty so this is referring to that here and uh, if you see what we require to survive even for eating so little how much to eat or few chapati packets you're from south or not what's up how much we so little we food and we need 6 feet to sleep at night and uh, some cloth to cover the body but now this civilization has made us work hard like a donkey what for you know so hard we had to work one feature of kaliyuga is just for little food we had to struggle very hard I, but what is the logic because how will food come food is like let's say dal rice okay vegetable is it so how to get dal rice how you get it from that from the market it's from water put the seed and you get how much will you get more than you can eat so simple okay dal and rice milk ghee butter then you keep a cow everything will come from the cow isn't it but then why have to struggle hard for food <laughs> why am i paying i don't know how much is the cost of one loaf of bread or you know whatever food i have to pay so much money this civilization is wrong actually we don't have to struggle we but the, because of greed we have taken this position to accumulate wealth money car but actually we can just get everything from land and cow which is not only in india every single country in the world this is what we did even now you go and they call primitive society <laughs> people are still living happily surviving no need for credit card ATM and gp <laughs> no need but because of so much uh, desire to enjoy sense gratification we want to accumulate well this is the problem so this govinda das is saying that uh, he's telling his mind just worship krishna and you know try to come to this level of happiness 
And but he's saying, but we are not doing that. <clears throat> Instead, I served all these people. I accused. I tried to get so much wealth. I struggled hard. What for? Bifale, no fruit, no benefit. He says that. And then in, in the next verse. We cover two verses. Two verses are remaining. We'll be done next week. Now I'll take any questions. So uh, we normally do Bhagavad Gita theme. This is not Gita, but as you can see, all the teachings of Gita in the verses. What he's longing, what he's thinking, what is his aspiration. Good question. Good question. Okay, so Hare Krishna.